All right. Okay, before we get started, some housekeeping. <coughs> what is your name? I'm Brian. Brian? Joey, nice to meet you. Welcome, new guy, Brian. Is this your first day in here? That's Martin, everybody. Martin. Martin's the man. What's your name? Mark. Mark. Nice to meet you, Mark. Everyone, welcome, Mark. Is this your first day in here, too? And we got Super Nintendo Chalmers. <laughs> you can just call him Ian or Super Nintendo. Or Chalmers, that'd be preferable. Or Chalmers, okay. Don't ask him what he wants to be called. <laughs> And everybody else? Super Nintendo? Huh? Yeah, the Simpsons. Remember Super the Superintendent? And Ralph is like, hey, Super Nintendo Chalmers. Remember? On the... Skinner! Skinner! Okay, so this is... So this is week one of the cycle. So week one of the cycle is always my favorite because we get to get into the fuckery of alcoholism and addiction. Uh, for me, it's three. For uh, like a senior group, it's two. Because every two weeks, you move on to the different groups, right? Except for stabilization works differently, where once you're here for a certain amount of time, it's like, okay, you're ready to move on type thing. Um, you guys are, it's almost like a holding tank. <laughs> it's like a holding tank where you can sit here, we can joke around, we can laugh about shit. And then as soon as the senior groups start to become empty, I start moving people on. But this group is by far the best group. By far. No, I'm just joking. So, <laughs> okay, so here's the deal. We're going to talk about some step one shit today. Uh, more specifically, we're going to talk about the insanity of alcoholism. So we're going to, uh, and addiction, I should point out. They're the same thing. I just say alcoholism. I don't know, because it was the first word I heard, I guess. <sighs> okay, so. Where do I be? There's too much shit to relay to you guys. This is going to take all day, and we're going to have to start at the very, very beginning. So you guys might get a little bit dissuaded, or you might not know where I'm going to be going with all this stuff, but I tr just trust that at the end, it's going to create a bigger picture as to what's going on. So human beings are really, really, really complicated. The human brain is the most complicated organism or machine or robot or anything that we know about. It's the most complicated thing in the known universe right now. So when there's something going on psychologically, it, you, can, you can get it's going to be really, really complicated. And there's shit that goes on that we don't understand. Uh, there's shit that goes on that people have been to school for 15 years, got a master's, got a bachelor's, got a post-dip, got a doctorate. That, there's lots of shit that they don't even understand. Like we can get the most qualified mental health professionals in the entire world and sick a team of them on any one of you guys and it would effectively not do anything. <laughs> Has anyone here been to therapy? No. Why'd you still relapse? Has anyone done CBT? Smart recovery? Why would you still relapse? Has anyone gone to the gym, got a sick upper body pump, hit the beach, yeah. talked to some ladies, and still relapsed after that? Yeah. Oh, wild. How would you relapse after something like that? Yeah. That's the fucking, that's the goods right there. Okay, so there's a lot of stuff, and it's really complicated. So we don't really know. And you know, it's our brain's job to simplify everything for us, eh? There's too much shit going on at one time. So our brain will try and simplify things for us and we need that to happen. If the brain didn't simplify 99.9% .9 of the world for us, we'd be completely overwhelmed by information and we'd fucking seize out and we'd short circuit and we'd just explode. A spontaneous human combustion would occur if we tried to consciously process all the information. But the problem with that is the devil's in the details. So it's really, really weird because What happened, way back in the day, Nietzsche, who was a, a critic of Christianity, was, he said basically, like, we're, we're going to have to invent our own, Christianity is going to experience its death at the hands of itself. It's going to self, self-destruct itself because of the value systems instantiated by Christianity. The logical conclusion is that those same values would turn around and eat Christianity. So he said, we're going to have to we're going to have to invent our own values and our own moral code. And that's based off, it'll be based off logic and reason. And that's essentially what the Enlightenment was about. 
okay, logic and reason and the spirit of scientific inquiry ruling the day. So, and forgive me, I'm kind of fumbling through this right now because I've never talked about this before and I don't really understand it completely yet, but it, it goes something like this. So, we need to invent our own value system. Later on though, people started understanding, mainly young, that that wasn't a good idea. Because what Freud did was say, we're actually operating almost completely, and this isn't a very nice fact, um, we're operating on subconscious or unconscious, as he would say, motivations that are beyond our awareness. So lots of the time, like, we're doing things and we have no idea what we're doing. And we're thinking things and we don't know why we're thinking these things. Somebody says something about me, something derogatory, someone makes fun of me, I don't care. Someone else makes fun of me, I care. Let's just say there's two people, they say the exact same words to me, this person I don't give a shit about when he says it, I just don't care. This person affects me a great deal, why is that? Or the same person, he calls me this, ha ha, it's all funny, it's a joke, I'm joking around with my buddy. He says that, all of a sudden he's crossed the line, like all of a sudden he's gone too far, all of a sudden he needs to be physically abused by me so he never does it again. We're really touchy about this kind of stuff. Our belief systems, our value systems, the things that drive us, very, very touchy about it. Do we know about them? Most likely not. Most likely not. So let's get into the way that we operate in the world as thoroughly as possible. So the first chain of, a, the first thing is the actual world itself. So we're essentially, each of us are at the center of our own world and we're outwardly perceiving everything. Like I can perceive that camera, I'm seeing you guys here, I know I'm in this room, I know this room is in a greater building and I know this building is in a city, within a province, within a country, right? Within a continent, within the world. So there's every single thing in the world that I know about, okay? Now, the information that I'm taking in Oh shit, I already messed that one up. The information that I'm taking in is information. So everything I'm perceiving right now through my five senses is essentially just information, okay? If you, if you, look, about, if you look at, uh, listen to someone who's a bit, a bit weird, like Deepak Chopra, he will call it the quantum soup or the field of potentiality. And uh, that's a really dumb word because most people just say a field of potential. They don't have to add the ality to sound fancy in there. But essentially, it's all just information. Everything is made of a bunch of atoms just cluster funk together in various orders. And they all, uh, atoms all essentially look the same from the outside at least. Inside, they can have varying numbers of electrons and neutrons. And pro but essentially, they're the same and they arrange themselves and we, st and, and we take this information in through our five senses, okay? And we become conscious of it. Consciousness. Now consciousness is the most mysterious element of our existence. To me, there's no difference between consciousness and God. There's no, but we'll, we can get into that shit later. Do you guys know that you're conscious beings? You guys can uh, see things and you can make up choices and you can operate. Like we're not determined like a clock what we're going to do today, right? Clocks only do one thing and it's predetermined and they will always do that. Unless there's a battery so shortage or a beam of lightning hits it or you break the, it's, it's guaranteed to do the same thing every day. We're not like that. We actually have a consciousness that allows us to be free, free agents in this world. Do what we want to do. Consciousness is weird because you can't actually prove consciousness. You don't, we don't actually really know what it is. We know we have it. I know I'm conscious. I know I'm not a robot. And I know you guys aren't robots. I recognize that within you guys. And actually, we, I recognize it within animals, right? Uh, I recognize it within mammals the most because their consciousness is the most similar to mine. Obviously, not as advanced. Like, uh, humans are just a, in a whole other dimension when it comes to consciousness. But other animals have consciousness. And a lizard has some form of primitive consciousness, though I don't understand it and I can't put my, I don't know what it would be like to be a lizard. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I know what it's like to be me. And that's essentially what consciousness is. I know, I have a sense of what it's like to feel like who I am. Do you guys get that? It's a bit fucking weird. 
but that's essentially consciousness. Also what consciousness is, is this field of potential in which anything could happen. So any single thing could arise in consciousness. It's all, it's only information, okay? Do you guys think I see the same thing as a bat? What about a dolphin? If there was a dolphin tank here and it was looking out at you guys, would you see the same thing? Their, their consciousness is different. So they process information differently than us, don't they? And it affects everything. Bats don't see. They actually can see. No, they can see. They do have eyes. Yeah, they don't see that well, but they do see, and they do use their vision to do stuff, or else they wouldn't have vision. But yeah, they're a combination of both. So, remember when I said don't talk for this whole group? Remember that? Swing and a miss, Chalmers. <laughs> okay? Good though. Good though. <laughs> Strike one, yeah. <laughs> okay? So different creatures, if you will, depending on the way their brains and their nervous system and all that shit is set up, they, have, they process the information differently and they see an entirely different world. What I call reality isn't reality to a different creature. It's my own subjective version of reality, okay? You get people saying there's no such thing as objective reality. It's all a subjective experience. We'll get, we can get into that stuff later, but definitely not today. Consciousness, think of it as Okay, you know how nowadays we have crazy CGI in movies? So you can, you like have a, like sometimes I'm watching a movie and it seems like they're in like, let's just say like a Harry Potter type movie where they're in like England and they're like, Ooh, do, 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 and you just think it's like a regular movie, pretend that you don't know anything about Harry Potter, and then all of a sudden there's spells and shit. You're like, whoa, where the fuck do these spells come from? Like, I didn't know there was magic in this movie. I'm not, I never read Harry, I didn't even know what it was before I saw it. So that really caught me by surprise. So if you're watching a movie that you've never seen before, there could be dragons in that movie, there could be magic spells in that movie. It could be like a movie that's set in the future with all these weird flying cars and shit. Like who knows what's gonna happen on that screen? Same with consciousness. It's like whatever I can see, whatever's in my field of awareness, it's just a field of potential. Anything can happen. You could just get up right now, say hello to my little friend, and fucking mow everybody down. That can happen. Okay? It's not out of the realm of possibility. A anything could happen in my consciousness. Now, the process. Activities in consciousness. So we could say the information that's processed by our five senses becomes, we're, we become conscious of it, okay? And everything that I know, everything that I know, is an activity that occurs in consciousness. This goes with things that are physical, material, out there, and they also go with the things that are more, that are more metaphysical, like emotions and experience. Like an experience is something that occurs in consciousness, okay? But there's no direct biological correlate to experience. So anything that I will ever know in the history of all time, whether it be feelings, emotions, fucking experiences, seeing things, hearing things, is all an activity that arises in my own consciousness. So essentially, this is my entire world, is it not? This is life. This is what life is. This is God. This is everything, what I'm conscious of. Now, here's the fucked up part. Again, our brains, we've got about 100 billion neurons firing along 100 trillion potential pathways. So we got 100 billion neurons, just in the brain, doing uh, up to 100 trillion possible things. So that's fucked up. I don't, thank God I'm not conscious of that process because I would fuck it up. I don't have to be conscious of certain things. My brain and my body will deem it necessary that I, or consciousness does this itself. It excludes certain things that aren't important to me. I'm gonna be, I don't need to be conscious of my breathing. It's gonna do what's on its own. Do it on its own. I don't have to be conscious of digesting my own food. It's gonna do it on its own, okay? There's lots of things that I don't need to be conscious of, but what's going on is there's something approximating 400 billion bytes of information coming into us by sensory input every second. Consciously, we process around 2,000. 
So almost every single thing in the entire world is completely unconscious to us, meaning it's not even real. Okay? And it is in my belief that we need to be fully conscious of things that are going on within us as people before we are able to get rid of them. Do you guys understand what I mean? I'm not, these behaviors, these things that we do, the ways that we think, all the little ways that we go wrong and like the, the, the forks in the road that we get into and we take the wrong way, like we need to fully know what these things are and like from a, a really deep integral level, like all the parameters, everything. We need to know about this shit because if we don't know we do it, we're not gonna be able to stop it. Do you guys get that? So why do we keep fucking relapsing? Why do we seemingly get pissed off so much? Why do we spend most of our lives in fear? Oh, I don't want, I'm too scared to get a better job. I'm too scared to go to school. I'm too scared to ask that girl out. I'm too scared to face that guy. I'm too scared to make a mistake, so I'm not gonna put myself in this situation in the first place. I'm desperately lonely, but I'm too scared to go make friends. I don't know what to do. I'll fuck it up. You, know, you guys know what I mean? Does this thinking sound familiar to you guys? This is my whole life spent living in fear. Everything was dominated by fear completely. So why the fuck is that? Okay? So activities that arise in my consciousness, I apply meaning to those things. Me, personally, as an individual, I apply meaning to these things. So we all essentially perceive, unless we're colorblind or we have like a, a lot of brain trauma, we essentially, or we have, or we're deaf or something like that, we essentially, we perceive the same thing in consciousness. Like, cause that, can anyone agree that this is a water bottle? Can everyone agree that this is a water bottle? Okay, yeah. what color shirt is this? Blue. Yeah, it's a blue shirt. So we're all seeing the same thing, right? But here, we, we apply different meanings to things that we see in consciousness. What if my dad, this is not true, but, hey, what the? What if my dad was a, was a huge chewer? He was always dipping. He was always packing a fat dip. He was always like That stuff so gross to me, right? I'm like oh, oh. I started gagging. What if he always had one of those water bottles? I was like throughout my childhood, okay? That bottle is now gonna mean something different to me than it would to you guys. Because I've got personal experience from a young age, experience with water bottles like that. Those are dip water bottles. Only guys that chew drink that water so they can spit, you know, it's going to be different for me. So our consciousness, although it's more similar than different, if you look at like the whole entire animal kingdom, ours is really specific to us, but we each have our own consciousness that's specific to us as individuals. So what I perceive in this cup is going to be, di or this water bottle is going to be different to what you guys perceive. If you guys are as old as me, these could also mean this is what you used to do BTs. Do you guys remember BTs? Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Um, so I have a question. So you're, are you specifically talking about trauma uh, affecting our consciousness, personally? Nope. I'm talking about any single experience that we've had will affect oh. our consciousness. Oh, okay. As far as trauma goes, I'm saying like if we got not psychological trauma, like physical brain trauma, then it's going to affect our, then oh, okay. we're, but we're probably not. I think we're all good here, we're, so we're all perceiving, we're all on a level, level playing field, right? Okay. Like I'm saying, if you were blind, your consciousness wouldn't be as close to ours as it could be. Do you, I got a question. Yeah. Uh, that, I can't remember his name, but this doctor said that he found computer programming in, our, in the string theory. So wouldn't that mean that we all see the same thing? Wouldn't the information that comes from you be the same? You know what I mean? Well, yeah, I don't know if... I don't, I don't want to get into that. I know nothing about string theory. Well, but what I'm saying is unless I'm blind or deaf or I ha I'm colorblind, I'm going to see the exact same thing like as you guys. Okay, yeah, that's a good way of describing it. That's a, that's a really good way of describing it. The matrix. We're all living in the matrix right now. We're seeing the same thing. And then we got your Morpheuses and your Neos, and they can see it for what it is, and they can manipulate it a little bit in their favor. Okay? Now, if we don't know what it is, and we don't know that we're living in this magical world where anything could happen, and we have the power to affect what happens, we're going to be essentially hashtag not woke. <laughs> we're going to be not woke AF. We're going to be the guys that haven't unplugged yet, and we're just going to be going around pretending like everything's okay, and we're going to be a large extent driven by the programming of this computer up here. Do you guys understand that? Yeah. 
once you understand the programming and you understand the computer and hopefully you've gone through the steps, you will be able to fuck with the computer to change essentially your reality, okay? So we're all seeing the same things, but we place different meaning on different things. Where do these meanings come from? Why does that mean something different to me than it does to you guys? So we'll, yes, so we'll get into the subconscious. And there we'll find our values and our beliefs. So these things, to a large extent, there's other, there's other shit floating around in there, will place meanings on activities that occur in consciousness. So I process the information that I see through my five senses. And if you're an epiphenomenalist, you'll say that produces consciousness. If you're more mystical like me, consciousness is already there and the information gets thrown onto the screen that's pre-existing, then the, the activities, people, places, things, objects, our value and belief system will place meaning on them. So if we talk about values for a second, usually values and beliefs are heritable. The ones that really stick with you for like the duration of your lives and that are really important to you and that cause a tremendous amount of negative emotion if they're opposed, or a tremendous amount of positive emotion if they're uh, reinforced will be learnt from a young age, okay? There's other beliefs that you can learn later on that will affect your behaviors and stuff, but mostly you'll learn the really powerful ones, you learn them from a young age, your core values and your core beliefs, okay? And they, uh, they're roughly this, they're almost roughly the same, they're really highly correlated with each other. So let's get into uh, my, let's get into my father. So my dad's one of those classic work your fucking ass off every day type guys. N missed some Christmases, missed birthdays, missed, and it wasn't anything like, uh, oh, where's dad again? It wasn't anything like that, I, I don't think. I don't remember being that upset by it by the age of like maybe six. It was like, yeah, he's working. He's, you know, he was around enough that, that if he wasn't around during a special holiday, like it wasn't a big deal. So it wasn't so much that he, daddy wasn't around. It wasn't one of those. It was like my dad works his ass off and he tells me, you got to work your ass off. And more than he told me, he led by example. So my mother and my father are both like this. They both work a lot and they both work really hard. And my dad, like he'd come home and if there was something that he kind of left for like the, the next crew that like he would fuck and he would go back to work if he thought of it. He, could, he had to be like that. So he he's like, he really values getting everything done, being the best worker. If you're going to do something right, do it right the first time and do it your fucking self. So he's that type of guy. And my mom's kind of like that too. She's very kind of pragmatic, like practical, practical smarts. And she was like that too. We'll just do it then. They were pull yourself up by your bootstraps kind of people. Like, don't fuck around, just do it. Oh, you don't know how to swim? Psh, here you go, here you go, <laughs> you little fucker. You, ru you ruined my life. No, I'm just joking, I'm just joking. <laughs> and he was always on time, and he, he was, yeah, he was always on time and he was never late. Yeah, I was gonna say that, it's, it's the exact same thing. And they always st they, he'd stayed later, <laughs> fuck. Fuck, that went out big time. And he always stayed later, so this, just by acting like that and every once in a while imparting some wisdom, I learned to value that. I value that. You go to get, so now a days, and this, uh, this value I have affects me for the rest of my life. When I'm late, if I show up late to work, especially when I worked in a kitchen, it fucking ruined me, man. I would be like, I used to take the bus into work and I would get on the bus and I would look at the wall and I'd be like, shit, I'm not gonna make it on time. The entire bus ride was like, oh fuck, oh fuck, hurry up, hurry up. Now every red light pisses me off. Every time someone needs to ask the bus driver a question and he stops driving, you're, I'm gonna kill you, you're done. <laughs> yeah. yeah, why don't you just ask Google? You know what I mean? Like everything that's getting in the way of me getting into work on time really pisses me off. And I, I lived in, I grew up in Whistler, right? So a lot of times, like, there's only one highway. So if there's any event, it's just like, you're, it's gonna take you a while. Like no matter what, if there's a crash on the road, there's only one road. Yeah. Well, there's a secret road. Some of you guys may know it, but you don't go on that road when it's really snowy, yeah. unless you're prepared. But I didn't have a car anyway, so it, anyways, I'm just getting into a lot of completely useless <laughs> detail here. So I really, really didn't like being late. So the whole bus ride would be shitty. I'd get there and I'd be very, very apologetic. Oh, holy shit, guys, I'm fucking sorry. I'm so sorry. I'd be like, yeah, whatever, man, it's fine. And I'd be like, oh, I'm really sorry. Then I'd be like, it's fine. Like, we don't fucking care. It's like, you're 10 minutes late, like whatever. And they're like, okay, okay, thanks. But it's not good enough for me. 
because it's got, I, I contradicted my own value system. So I'm a piece of shit right now. So what I will do is I'll stress out the whole shift and I will do more than my fair share of duties. You know, don't touch that, I'll do it. You just sit there, read a paper or something, I'll do everything. And they're just like, the fuck? I spent my whole shift making up to them, okay? Because I value that so much and I contradicted my own values. The weird part about this specific value is I don't get satisfaction from showing up on time. I don't get satisfaction from doing a job well. I only experience a tremendous amount of self-disgust if I don't do it. So there's no real net positive for my emotional well-being with that specific value. It usually only fucks with me. And I don't seem to ever be able to do a good enough job for myself. I like to blame it on my father. He's, a, he's, he's very judgmental and he works in, inhumanly hard. So he just, my father actually was proud of me. He was like, yeah, you work very hard. So he, but I always blamed him for the fact that I never, you know, it's like nothing's ever good enough for my father. But that's not true. My dad was just a really good worker. I, I learned that value from him. I inherited that value. And now I'm, I'm my own judge. My father is just a symbolic representation for my own negative judgment about myself. Do you guys understand that? Are you, are you guys following on that? Now, what about when other people don't show up on time? Okay, I, for the first one time they show up late, will have a tremendous amount of sympathy for them. Oh shit, the, he's probably stressing out so bad. He or she is probably stressing out so bad. Like, don't worry about it. Like, seriously, don't worry about it. Well, I'm, I'm late sometime. But the second time they're late, they're fucking lazy. They're probably smoking pot. They probably fucking stayed up all night drinking, even though that's what I did every night, but I would judge other people for it. They're stupid. They don't give a fuck. I don't respect them. Extreme lack of respect for people who showed up late. Extreme lack of respect. I really, really didn't like it because they're going against my value system. I value people who are straight up, show up on time, do a good job with a good attitude. Note that I was that person most of the time. I was a heroin addict, after all. Still am. I'm just currently sober, okay? So... <laughs> I would really, I would really, um, what's the word? I was going to say I'd really go down on people like that. That's not, a, <laughs> that's not the right thing to say. So, I know what you I would really come, yeah, come down on, yeah, 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 I would, yeah. yeah. We judge other other addicts. Yeah. Like, for example, I would judge people that smoke crack and use needles and all these things. But I ended up doing it all. Exactly. So, yeah, yeah. in the end. Exactly. So, that fact, someone running in the door, 10 minutes after they should have, arises in consciousness. My value system places meaning on that. And the meaning is that person's a douche or they don't deserve my respect or like, better not happen again. Like, Do you even care about anything? Like you're just a, the worst human. <laughs> you know what I mean? It wasn't always that severe, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna be real with you guys a lot of time it was. It was that severe. And then also, we got our beliefs. And I like to spend a lot of time talking about these beliefs. There's a bunch of theories about what addiction is, right? There's like, it's environmental, it's genetic, it's perception, <laughs> it's insecurity. You just need, it's a choice. Yeah, stop choosing to be insane. <laughs> you know, strike two, strike two. Okay. Uh, there's a lot of different theories. And again, the addiction, the brain is the most complicated thing in the known universe. So when you have a really fucking weird mental disorder, like addiction, it's more, of, let, let's be honest, it's more of a mental illness than an actual disease. It does <laughs> cause organ damage and stuff like that, but there's no actual direct biological correlate. There's no addict gene. There's no, oh, it's your liver is uh, got a weird spot in it. That's what addiction is. We'll just cut that. It's not... It's not biological in nature. Well, I mean, everything is biological in nature because we're biological creatures, but for all intents and purposes, it's a mental illness. So I believe that the belief system it plays a very large part, a very large part. And, that, and, and belief system is kind of environment. So, because you will learn your beliefs from your environment. Now, I've got some negative core beliefs about myself, man. And they follow roughly an 80-20 rule, meaning like two of my negative core beliefs I don't know how many we have, probably only have a couple, are responsible for 80% of all my fuckery up here. Almost all of my fuckery is on, and, and you guys will know these ones. There's gonna be, they're really, really fundamental. There's gonna be ones that like, no one loves me is an example of a core belief. I'm not good enough is a fairly common one. 
and that'll cause you to never feel good about enough in anything. Anything you do, you'll never be good enough. Even if you're better than everybody else, and you know that intellectually, you know you're better. Let's just say Michael Jordan had a belief, I'm not good enough, <laughs> okay? Even though he was Michael Jordan, he still wouldn't feel he was a good enough basketball player if he had that core belief, which he probably did. <clears throat> so these things w will defy logic. And intellectually, you could know that you, you are good enough. It doesn't matter. If you have that core belief, it's going to persist unless you get some real work done. So like I have a belief, and I can even identify the origins of, of some of these beliefs. And I'm just going to quickly pause for a second for the camera. If my mother's watching this, I do love you. I don't mean everything that I say. So my mom was quite harsh, okay? <laughs> she was quite critical. And she's fairly snappy. And she's, she's a bit scary. All my friends are like, I'm fucking terrified of your mom. I would not want her to be mad. She's in, like, you either really, really like her or you're scared of her, depending on what kind of person you are. If you're a good and you do the right thing, she loves you. If you're like kind of one of those like shady people, she's like, what the fuck? <laughs> you know what I mean? I turned out to be one of those shady people, so it was not good for me. When I'm young, core beliefs are, are formed from when you're approximately three to eight. You got your hippocampus, hippocampus, which is dedicated to memory. You have implicit memory and you have ex explicit memory. Explicit memory is like the memory you learn from the outside. And you develop that capacity when you're around three. So between three and eight, when your brain is developing and you don't even know shit about the world, you learn these beliefs. So a typical Sunday, would be like, okay, I got to do all the things. My mom says, I got to do all the things. I got to pay some bills. I got to go here. I got to go. You couldn't just use the internet for everything back then. Okay. I don't even think there really was internet. Yeah, there was maybe just internet when it was the black screen with the green writing, like DOS mode. That was, so she, when, you, when you had to do errands, you couldn't just do them all on the computer like you can now. Just order paper towel off Amazon, pay all your bills, online banking. Like it's so easy now. So but my mom can't leave me at home, can she? Because I'm just a little boy. So she takes me with her. Now I'm a fucking four-year-old or a five-year-old or maybe even a six-year-old. I don't want uh, to do that. <laughs> I don't want to go to the fucking library. I don't want to fucking go grocery shopping unless I'm going to get some goddamn candy. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't want to do all... But my mom, you know, what else is she going to do? So she takes me around, do 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 and we're like, we're in the grocery store, and I'm like looking around, and then boom, right in front of my face, licorice. You know, not even in wrappers. You know how the licorice isn't even in wrappers? I go, oh, and I grab the licorice right away. My mom's on it. Joey, stop it. She would say something like, you have to buy that. There are, people are trying to run a business. You're not supposed to do that. People don't like it. Like that kind of stuff. People don't like it. Trying to run a business. That's inappropriate. Blah, blah, blah. And she's quite harsh about it. Like her face would go like a, she's very, yeah, it cuts, man. It cut me deep. It cut me deep. Okay, she's very, she's very powerful that way. Then later on, we're like at the library, my mom likes to read, she's like picking out all these books and I'm just a kid, I'm sitting there and I'm like bored. And maybe I saw, and the, the Whistler library back then was like literally up, you know a portable? You know schools where they have the portables outside? Yeah. It was a portable. And uh, maybe I'd see, some, you know, I'd be bored in there and maybe I'd see something shiny or I'd see like a dog because people could bring their dogs in there and I'd just be like, dog! And she'd be like, Joey, shh, <laughs> This is a library. Like, you just don't do that. It's a library. I'm like, and like, then she's like, you know what? Joey's acting like a fuck. He's starting to get rowdy because I was an ADHD style kid. Maybe I'll take him to McDonald's. To shut him up. You know what I mean? Takes me to McDonald's. Mom, I have to poo. <laughs> Joey, fuck. We're in a restaurant. Like, stop. People don't like, I was always doing shit like that. Well, kids, kids do, right? Kids act very inappropriately. And my mom was always on it, on it, on it. Very, very instant. Very venomous, like very, cons it just cut me deep every time. She was really precise and just like, Ksh! and I was like, holy fuck. It's, it was scary. It scared me as a kid. Now I'm just a little kid, so I'm not thinking things like, oh, mom's having a bad day, or mom's reacting to her own core beliefs, which I know now. I'm just thinking, holy fuck, if I do anything inappropriate, people will hate me. That's what I learned. That's the belief that I learned. It solidified itself over time. If I do anything inappropriate, people will hate me. So talk about, so talk about doing things that, that you don't know that you're doing. I'm still reacting to that belief. I'm reacting to that belief today. If I feel I've said something inappropriate, it fucking fucks me right off. Now, I am very inappropriate. 
and I swear a lot, and I'm quite vulgar, but I, you know, we're all the, we're the bros, right? So I don't really, it doesn't matter. But if I talk like this in public, which I do often by accent, where I just start, oh, fucking body, I was fucking doing this, fuck, and then I'm like, oh, shit. And there's like kids everywhere, and I'm like, oh, man. And it really gets me. I'm really fucking, so, oh, I'm, I gotta go. <laughs> I gotta go. <laughs> just start crying. <laughs> I gotta go home, and like it really, it really bothers me. So I'm reacting to a belief that I learned when I was a little kid. That's one thing that I don't know that I've been doing my whole frickin' life. Like, how many times I, have I gotten in a crazy state or not even entered a situation that I want to enter because of that? Oh, come join us to do this. I desperately wanna do it, but I can't because I'll fucking do something dumb. Shit, that's what I would do. I would just avoid situations altogether so I for sure would never be appropriate. Not only that, but even at a young age, kids are really, really smart and our brains are muy bueno. Now I can kind of, once my mom says this is inappropriate and this is inappropriate and this is inappropriate and this is inappropriate, I know, let's just say seven or eight or 10 fucking things that are for sure inappropriate. Now I can, now my brain beyond my conscious awareness will start abstracting patterns from that. And then I will start to piece together, oh, well, then that would also then be inappropriate. And then that would also then be inappropriate. And kids, are, kids do this on a regular basis as part of development. That's why kids are dumb. And then eventually they become smart because <laughs> this process happens. We don't know that it's happening when we're that young, but we're acting it out, aren't we? Right? We're acting that out. But what if I'm really, really scared of doing anything inappropriate, really scared of it, because it's a core belief now, and it's always met with v sharpness. And like, like no, it's a big no-no. Now I'm gonna be, the things that I choose to put in my patterns of recognition for inappropriate things are gonna be fairly far-fetched. Like if I, if I was you right now, yeah. I would be not, well, now, I'll just say nowadays it doesn't really matter to me that much anymore because I did the steps. So like fairly, I'm fairly balanced these days. But let's just say I was a client. I was just in active addiction and I was you and I was coughing and, and, and there was a group. So I'd be like, are you okay? I'd be like, is it okay if I cough in here? Because if it's not, I'll just go. <laughs> you know what I mean? I would not like it. If, uh, have you guys ever done something that's too loud by accident? Yeah. <laughs> like if I did something too. Hey, it's like it's like you when you ask questions. You want to ask the question. You want the dialogue. You want to figure it out. But you don't want to be incoherent with your questions, and you don't want everybody to. You don't want to take up everybody else's time. So sometimes you ask three quarters of a question, and then you say, "Actually, I'm going to sit down," because you don't want to be inappropriate. You don't want to take up everybody's time. Is that correct? I was recognizing that, yes, you're right. Okay, sweet. So there's that. Um, I, now I forgot what we were talking about in the first place. We're going to go on break in like four minutes, so don't worry. So, um, oh yeah, just things that we, that we do that we don't know that we're doing. So we're abstracting patterns out that we will act out for the rest of our lives. What if we fuck it up though? Because if I'm really sensitive to this one, I'm going to be like, anything's going to make me inappropriate. Sometimes if I like... You know, I'll be like sitting there and I'll be like fucking around with something like I always fidget with stuff and sometimes it's like, they're usually sharp objects like knives or pins or something and I'll just be like, ow! And if I do it too loud, even that's enough to fuck with me. I fuck it, I ruined everything. Everyone hates me. I will go that severely into defects of character. Like I don't actively say everyone hates me now that I've done that, but my emotions are like, unjustifiably offside from something like that. Something so small. So our core beliefs, our core values, we're very, very susceptible to this. We're acting this out for the rest of our lives. There's the hundreds of different situations where I could get in, especially look at my job. So first I have a camera, which hopefully one day millions and billions of people will see this video. <laughs> but I got you guys. So you guys, some of you think certain behaviors are appropriate. Some of you think that other behaviors are appropriate. So instead of just having a chance to be inappropriate with one person that I happen to be engaging with conversation in, now it's all of you guys. So one, two, I don't know, there's 20, there's 20 times the amount of times I could be inappropriate. So the stakes are high. So that will actually cause me to be in a great deal of fear. Thank God I've been doing this job for a little while and I just don't 
have that as much anymore, but I still have it. Remember when you came in the other day yeah. and you were giving me yeah. maybe 10% SAS? And I was like, did I do something wrong? Yeah. Do you hate me? And like I was saying it sarcastically, but those were real words. I sensed the little bit and it was too much for me. Yeah. Too much for me to take. I got really upset by that. That's a really dumb thing to get upset by. It is because I work at a treatment center and I get shitty treatment from people every day. <laughs> And I know it, and I actually get treated quite well. Like, you guys are actually quite respectful, even though this is the first group that you enter. Actually, amazingly respectful. So, but even, even so, that much is enough to, to fuck me right off. So, <laughs> I get, we have to go on break now. Yeah, we have to go on break now. <laughs> Just fucks me right off. Huh?